your life is defined in a lot of ways and has been or had been defined by race. Yeah. Your mother was a black South African and your father was a Swiss white man. Yeah, they still are. Great. And they were also. Yeah. Um, and you were born a crime, hence the name of the book. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Your life has been defined by race, but I also find that you're kind of bored and or disinterested by it. About what? My life? Race. No, about race. No, no. I, I think bored is the wrong the wrong w- word for it. I think I it's, don't think um, bored's the right word, but I, do you know what I mean? Like yeah, your feeling about it is like. Uh, no, okay. So here's how I'll put it. it. It's funny. It's like I think I think everybody's life is defined by race, but I think I was unlucky or lucky enough to have it like put to in, know it. Yeah, to like know it. You know, I think a lot of people don't know that it's happening to them, um, for good or bad. Funny enough. So I think people are living in a world where. You know, this, this, it's like, like I always, I try and explain to people as I go, um, being the race that you are is like having a, a badge, you know, like, like those doors that you have at companies to let you yeah. in doors. You know what I mean? Those little badges that you go and swipe. Yeah. And then some people don't understand why their badges aren't swiping the badge, but they don't know they have the badge. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's a fob so, that they don't yeah, know they yeah, have. Yeah. And then some people are just like, what are you talking about? The door opens all the time. And then other people are like, the door doesn't like me. I think it's, I think it's, um, yeah, I think it's omnipresent. I think it's continuous. Um, I also think it's ridiculous. That's maybe my uh, my favorite thing about race. Maybe that's the thing. I think yeah. it's it itself. I don't find ridiculous, but I I I mean, when you grow up in a country where people define things like the the government says, like this is what race is, and this is how we we we're gonna run the country based on it, you start to realize how stupid the whole thing is. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like you're one tan away from not having a good time. That's basically what South Africa was back in the day. That's insane, and I believe you. Yeah. I'm sure there are people that got tan. And no, were no, locked for real. Up. Yeah, yeah. You just one tan, and then it was like, well, you might need to move or stay inside, and you couldn't go outside at times. Yeah, but right? I didn't know. I didn't know. So I don't. I don't have his grandmother, according to the book, and according yeah. to what you've told me, would explain the law to people. Well, this, so it was weird. So okay, just it's it's really simple. You go. A country is run by some very racist people. They believe that everyone should be governed by race. White people at the top, black people at the bottom, all the other shades in between, right? And you can move up or down in, in, the, in the rankings, you know? So it's sort of like, like soccer, football, as we call it. But it's like you can get promotion, you can get relegated, um, depending on your skin color and your hair. Um, so what was weird for me was, technically speaking, my dad was superior to me. And then my mom was inferior to me. So my mom's side of the family would be inferior because of the color of my skin. And then my dad's side would be um, superior. But then because of that, my gran was terrified. She was just terrified that people would take me away because they couldn't. I, I, I would love to sit down one day with, with somebody who like worked in the apartheid government or who ran the system to try and understand it from their point of view. I guess they didn't want that either because it just upended their rules or because it exposes the fact that black people and white people can have sex and make things. Right. So they were. it was illegal for your mother and father yeah, to yeah, yeah. No, sleep fully with illegal. each other. Fully, fully illegal. Which is what made it so hot. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, there, and so therefore you were, you were not, you were actually oh born a crime. Like literally you would have yeah. been taken, you probably yeah. would have been taken away. No, no, not, not probably. Definitely. If they knew I would have definitely been taken away. And you said um, to walk on the other side of the street from your mother. Yeah. Well, no, my mom would walk with me, but she would just act like she was my, she would act like she was my nanny. So she would dress up like a nanny and then walk me through the streets and just be like, I'm walking someone else's kid. And everyone was like, yeah, that makes sense. What's interesting is you, I hear you say this and like, think of it this way. Think of it this way. It's, it's so weird to try and explain this in this day and age, but imagine if a black person and a white person having a baby, the baby came out Japanese, right? But nobody really knew this because it wasn't allowed. And so then you saw a black woman walking down the street with a Japanese baby, you know, pushing them in a stroller. Yeah. You wouldn't assume that the baby's hers especially if she's dressed like a nanny. So my mom knew this. She intuitively knew that people did not fully understand that this thing could come out of her. So no one would even question her when she's right. Said, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, you were just alien. Yeah, because they're just like, oh, yeah, we've got a little uh, little baby there that's different. But you did feel very loved and cared for by your mother. Oh, completely. That's what's so interesting about it. It's like, it, while it was fraught, it's she could still deliver yeah. the nutrients. Yeah, completely. I think any parent who wants to can deliver the nutrients. It's sort of like that movie. Did you ever watch that movie? It was the Brie Larson Room. Yeah. So the, yeah. Thing, I, the thing I loved about that movie was it, while it was a painful story of like a, a mother and child being kidnapped and kept underground, it was an amazing story of how like your parents can literally define your reality. Yeah. So that kid, the room was the world and everything was fine. And the kid just wasn't allowed to go to certain places, but that was life. The kid was loved. The kid was nurtured. The kid was, do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. No, well, that's so I think we take it. for granted that sometimes your parents, you can be living in, in a, in a beautiful place and your parents can make it feel like you're in a Hell. room. Yeah. 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 It's, it can be, you can be rich and unloved oh, completely. or completely. dirt broke. No, 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 and- completely. So I'm, I'm really lucky. Like I, I grew up in a world where, you know, my mom has since apologized. She said, you know, she, she didn't appreciate nor fully understand the ramifications of a child not having their dad there for them all the time. But I do think I was lucky in that she she intended this from the beginning. So there was no fracture in my life. Yeah, explain that. I will meet people who like their parents had a divorce and I can see the pain and they go like, oh, I blamed myself. And I, and I was like, did yeah. my dad leave because of, did my mom, it was because of, I had none of that because there was no fracture. There was no, my mom said to my dad, I want a child. My dad was like, I don't want a child. She's like, yeah, that's none of my business. I just need you to facilitate this. And I think she wanted him because she knew that he wouldn't try and control her or her child. You mm. know? So she would have the autonomy that she that she wanted in life. And then lucky for me, I guess, he wanted to be a part of my life when I was born. But even then, my mom was like, we had a deal, buddy. What do you mean you want to see the kid? And how did she deal with it? Like it, whenever he... Yeah, she was she was like kind about it, but she was very much like, you do understand the deal. This is my child. And he yeah. was like, yeah, but I want to see it. She was like, She'd oh. like smack the agreement. <laughs> 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 right here, buddy. I don't know what to tell you. You signed on the He's page. He's right there. There, look at him. You yeah. signed on the page. <laughs> you can look, but don't touch. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. She was, um, you know, my mom has an innate understanding of things that she was never taught. And that's something I've always admired in her. And I think she innately understood the value of me seeing my father and being with my father, even if that wasn't the original agreement. So I spent, you know, a lot of time with him. And the time that I spent with him was focused and concentrated. So I don't even have, again, there's some memories, like you've got a great joke about it, where you say like your father would disappear into a book. Yeah, yeah, you know? it's, yes. But it's like just this idea of like, I know people who talk about their parents and they go, oh yeah, my dad was never really, even when he was around, he wasn't around and he was working on things and he was tired. And he, No, my dad was full on like, Door opens, locked in. Yeah. You were like, we're so hanging out. Very Swiss motherfucker. Yeah, we, we, we're watching Formula One. Yeah. All right, we, 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 we're hanging out. We're eating food. You want breakfast? You want lunch? All right, we're going to play with your toys. You're going to see your toys. You like your toys? What's he happening? point at you the whole time. What's happening? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, okay, and then it did get a little dicey, though, at a certain point. Your mother, uh, beyond the government, <laughs> looking out for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh trying to pick you up off the street. Your mother remarried, we'll say poorly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh it was violent. It was indeed. That's probably the reason we're friends. That's probably the reason we get along. Oh, if it yeah. if it wasn't for that decision, I may have just had like a You'd like be a, with Dave a, and Chris right yeah, now. I'd just be like a <laughs> super rosy outlook and yep. I'll just be like, you know. I don't. I don't Have get you that. Neil that guy. It's a little. It's a little. It's I don't a little get much. it. There's something. There's something about somebody him I don't get. heard uh, someone walking out of blocks, and he goes, uh, "Yo, my man got a little too introspective." <laughs> 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 um, but, but, so, but we have talked about the role that violence has played. Yeah. In uh, there's no uh, comedian. Uh, there's no comedian. I believe there is no comedian who is very good at what they do and did not become very good at what they do because they were avoiding or, you know what I mean? There's there's either there's a neurodivergence involved mm-hmm. or a neurodivergence multiplied by some sort of trauma. Yeah. You know, so you were bullied, you were abandoned, you were beaten, you were shamed, you yeah. were whatever it is. It's like those are the two ingredients to make like really, really good comedy, yeah. which I don't know. I'd love your thought on this. I, I've been thinking recently, I go, what is the value 
of an individual being tortured if they're going to bring joy to many people. Oh, you mean it didn't work? We jammed the no, system? No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, like, I mean, like, what is, like, is there a value or... So, for instance, we live in a world where we go, we don't want anyone to be hurt and we don't want anyone to live a tough right. life and we don't want anyone to... But I sometimes think to myself, if one child growing up in a horrible world yeah. becomes Mozart and that music then goes on to, like, make the world a better place, is it... Is it worth it? Was it worth beating little Mozart? Yeah. Of course, you know I've thought about this. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you, uh, you had to have thought about this. Uh, it's a collateral damage thing. It's it's similarly like bombing the area for to fight terrorism and you take out some civilians. No, no, no. No, I, no, no, no. but it's the no. same logic no, of it's that. Not. No, it's the not. The greater good is served yeah, by... but that one doesn't have a greater good. Choose no, no, no. another one. Uh, You're right. the best at analogies. Okay. Choose another one. I don't like that one. It's like if you beat baby Mozart. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no. It, and, and then he, uh, what I would say, I would say it's kind of worth it if Mozart can give us the compositions yeah. we need. Yeah. And then he gets better and doesn't, because that's the situation I think I'm in. In that, like, I took my beating. <laughs> I wrote my jokes. Yeah. I did a bunch of stuff to feel better, and now I feel better, and I wrote the jokes, and I can still write them. Yes. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it, though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab-assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe, and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high-pressure system coming in. I'm not really used to the green screen.